welcome back to Rosie Avery. Today in this video I want to be showing you how to make colour feed. Um, so there are three methods of colour feeding your birds. So the first method is using carafil red which is here which I'm going to show you. Um, then the second method is using carafil red in the egg food for the birds. Um, so that would be such as in this feeder here I may mix carafil in with the egg food um, or even the seed, just the basic sort of seed um, and that will colour feed the birds. And then the third method is actually using red factor egg food, um, which you will you can give from birth. Um, so my chosen preferred method is carafil red, um, as what you get to do is uh, you get to obviously select the birds you want to colour feed. Um, so for example here we have a flighted linnet mule. Um, so this bird is two or three years old now um, and I feed that, the colour feed that once in the molt, um, well over the molt anyway, over the course of the molt from when it starts to drop its feathers, I colour feed that using carafil red. Um, so yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to actually make it using carafil red. Okay, so this is how we're gonna start. So the equipment you're going to need, you're going to need a litre of water or um, an amount that you, you know. Um, anyway, so you can work out how much chlorophyll you need. Um, you will need a stirrer, so I'm just going to be using a wooden perch, that tends to do it fine. Um, and then I'm also going to show you um, a little measuring tool which you get. If So a lot of us, I know, uh, have used Mutivit, which is a, a multivitamin for birds in the malt. Um, and I'm just going to show you the amount of chlorophyll you put in here to give you an idea um, as I use a slightly different tool. Um, so this water is just fresh rainwater. It can be tap water, it doesn't make a difference. Um, I, a lot of people have said that you should do, use, do it using warm water, um, but I've found that uh, it doesn't really make a difference. It actually just makes it harder to deal with because you can't pour it straight into the drinkers. Um, so I've got my measurement here. Um, so what you're seeing uh, is I've got the, me the measurement right here in the spoon. Um, this is just a little plastic spoon I found uh, in the kitchen and um, that's the amount of chlorophyll I use. Um, so if you're wondering the weight of that, I won't be able to give you an exact, but I can tell you that it is under one gram of chlorophyll you need to a litre of water. Um, so if I give you um, the judgment using uh, a, a mute of it or any Versalaga um, like vitamin scoop uh, or supplement scoop then it will give you a better idea but you need less than a gram and um, what I would say is you're probably going to need um, prob it's probably about 0 0.5 grams however don't worry if you do have a quite a specific um, and calibrated set of uh, scales uh, you don't need to um, worry if you're about 0.1 to 0.2 of a gram over because you don't want it because it won't make much of a difference. If you give too much chlorophyll, you will end up burning the birds, uh, which is not good. And if you give too little, you won't see an effect. So you take your chlorophyll, you just put that into the water. So as you're seeing at the moment, not much of a change. You can see it's slightly going red. Give that a stir. And there you are, as simple as that. A litre of chlorophyll red colour feed. Um, so I use, I put this in uh, in the drinkers, obviously. Um, also, just something to mention, your chlorophyll red, do not let that get moist um, or wet, otherwise you will ruin it. And uh, it's not cheap, let's just say that. Um, so I'm going to show you now uh, what it looks like in, this, in a uh, Versalaga scoop. Uh, so that is roughly what you would give um, to yeah, a litre of water. Um, now what I do in colour feeding as well is I usually do mix a bit of the mutivit in um, with the water actually. Um, as it's just important that you also get those vitamins, uh, the vital vitamins in there for the birds. 
Um, so I try not to overdo it once because obviously you've already got a supplement in there. But a level scoop of Versal Argumutivit, that in there. Yep. Give that a stir just to give the birds the vitamins they need. Um, so that is a quarter of the amount that you would usually recommend. So it's usually uh, one scoop to 250 mil. However, um, you obviously you're already supplying this um, colour feed. So there you are, that is uh, Carafil Red colour feed for drinking. Okay, so the second method of uh, colour feeding is with seed. Uh, so this is just a standard uh, British Finch mix, so nothing um, nothing special really. Uh, I just give this to all of the small finches and then some to the large finches, but as a mix. But anyway, um, so for that all you'll need is what is basically equivalent to half a litre of seed um, and again the same amount of carafil. Now I'm not going to do this because I don't use this method, um, but this is another method that I know some people prefer to use. Um, as I've heard before anyway. Um, so you get the same amount of um, carafil, so that's about half a gram-ish of carafil. Um, and you add that to your seed, uh, mix your seed up as so, uh, and just get that in there. And then as the birds pick through the seed, um, they're obviously going to take in those little crystals of carafil, um, which is going to enhance the color, making them red. Um, I would advise against this method because if your birds don't like the seed and are you know quite picky, you put them in there and they're just going to swap the seed everywhere in the cage and not eat it, and you're probably not going to see a great effect. So I wouldn't recommend this method, but I know some people. So then there's a third method of colour feeding, uh, which is usually done from uh, when the birds hatch. So that is uh, red fact to egg food. So this isn't much special. Um, this is just uh, basically a, a plain egg food uh, that has been dyed. So I bought this um, in this colour. So whether it does actually have carafil wet, just making it red or not, um, I'm not sure. However, um, I found this is actually quite good uh, for hit, you know, getting the birds. So um, my mules especially, including this one, I do have them on this as well as the... Um, Carafil water. Um, so that is really the basic three methods. So um, I ha this also just to encourage the birds to take it. If you can see, there is also Niger seed mixed in there. Uh, it's just encouraging the birds. That's all. Nothing. Uh, you know, it doesn't. I, I don't think, or I don't believe anyway, that Niger seed has any colour feeding qualities to it. Um, but yeah, so there you are. So this would be fed from birth rather than the normal uh, sort of yellow egg feed, um, which is here. Uh, so that are, is the three methods of colour feeding. Um, my personal preference is the chlorophyll water. Um, however, this does work as well for the birds that need it. So I have um, given this to young bullfinches to see if we can get any colour. And um, I didn't see much going this year with it. Um, but that was mainly due to the parents weren't taking in much of this. So I don't believe the young birds were actually getting much. Um, I will try it with crossbills next year and I will try it with red poles next year. Um, I do have my... Uh, over year red pole cocks on this as well as colour feed okay so now um, I've showed you the three methods of colour feeding the birds um, so I actually do want to talk to you about how um, how you choose what birds need to be colour fed and um, what birds will need to be colour fed and what won't so prime example is uh, this linnet mule here um, so linnets in the wild uh, have got the red chest and the red cap um, so that that is going to be playing a big part in the mule anyway uh, to give it to a real um, good, good start for color feeding anyway because it will should be naturally that color um, 
other birds you um, may colour feed, you don't have to, um, but it usually just enhances the colour and especially uh, especially for shows it does uh, a, a lot of work and really does play a big part in winning. Um, so other birds, are, I would recommend that you colour feed pretty much every single mule. Um, with a few cases, with an exception, being really maybe green finch mules um, if you've got a, a darker bird. So if you have a clear bird, for example, a clear green finch mule, then uh, you should 100% colour feed that. But I wouldn't say to the red, I would, I would suggest preferring using probably a uh, car carafil orange or carafil yellow. Um, because that would be a bit more natural for the canary mixed with the green finch um, obviously with the green finch being yellow uh, sorry with a green finch being green unless you use a pied or an egg or a silver but still you wouldn't get a red green finch um, which takes on to the next part which is do not colour feed green finches um, green finches do tend to take colour feed quite well um, and do show it quite quite quickly um, because they obviously they are a green bird and it as soon as it comes out then uh, it does it does show um, I have accidentally a uh, green that fed last year uh, a green finch cock an over year cock on the red egg food um, I put it out in a mixed aviary and uh, he ate a lot of that until he sort of turned rather than a, a green as a green finch he was more of a uh, a rusty sort of brown colour and um, so do not colour feed green finches that was a, a novice mistake by myself last year um, other birds you should colour feed or um, would benefit from colour feeding in his crossbills um, so that would be commons parrots and two bards um, which are the main real three species um, that you come, ac come across more often than not. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you look at the uh, show standards for uh, the year um, as you colour feeding. Um, so for example this year, um, after looking at the show standards, the um, young crossbills should be a green uh, or yellowy brown sort of colour rather than a red. Um, so a bit of a mistake I made this year it was I, I started colour feeding the crossbills uh, young. Um, which are now in a variation of red um, so it, it won't it won't make it much of a difference but uh, as the show standards go they should be green yellow and that sort of color um, over year crossbill cocks most definitely um, you do get them sort of going a copper color and um, they always tend to do quite well in shows if you have them on the color feed um, over year hens pretty much the same goes um, color feed always does well um so then we look at sort of uh bullfinches for example um now if you color fed a hen bullfinch she would still be uh the sort of browny gray color rather than turning out red and looking like a cockbird um but obviously color feeding the bullfinch does enhance the color massively and uh, it does separate the difference between a yellow bird and a buff bird uh other birds for colour feeding, so red poles, um, so that most definitely would be over year cock red poles, um, but also a method for colour feeding and actually sexing young red poles um, is either all over the malt if you don't plan to show them, uh, get them on colour feed, the cocks will have the red chest uh, and the hens won't, or maybe if you are showing the, the young red poles, the, like the current year bird red poles, um, then I would recommend that you probably in about January to February time you pluck those a couple of chest feathers, uh, get them on carafil a week prior, pluck the feathers, get them on carafil, the, the red will come out and then you'll know whether it's a cock or a hen. Um, and obviously I would recommend doing uh, a couple of feathers, pulling a couple of feathers because um, if it misses that feather then you're just going to think oh that's a hen and it turns out it's a cock. Um, there are a few exceptions, for example, cobalt red poles. Um, you, you can colour feed them, but you aren't going to see uh, a, a huge sort of difference. Um, so I have tried it and you do get a sort of red 
lips red sort of glow over the chest but it's so slight compared to a, a cinnamon um, red polecock or a normal red polecock or an Isabel red polecock and um, the cobalt aren't as easy to sex using um, colour feed. Um, obviously other birds you wouldn't colour feed are siskins which will be a yellow bird um, or greeny colour you know so no variations of red so unless that bird naturally goes red do not colour feed it. Um, hybrids again I mean I would say 99% of the time you should colour feed hybrids um, unless you do have one that's already probably it would be better without colour feeding uh, it's sort of more of a a natural plumage if you want to call it that even though it is a hybrid so it wouldn't ever have an, a natural plumage um other than that there are canaries which you may colour feed so obviously if you keep red factor canaries or red dimorphic canaries or gap mosaics or uh, something along those lines you should really colour feed um it will actually help you differentiate cocks from hens in the dimorphics and the agat mosaics um, with red factors, I don't have a lot of experience with red factor canaries, um, but I don't think there's much of a difference between a red factor cock and red factor hen in terms of plumage. Um, Norwich. So if you can see the Norwich behind me in here and here, um, I wouldn't recommend carafil red, but you might colour feed on uh, carafil yellow or carafil orange. Um, just to get that, I mean, if you aren't planning on showing them and you're just interested to see if you could get a bit of a red Norwich, then by all means go for it. Um, but obviously, uh, it, that would only be out of personal preference and you do like the look of a, a red Norwich as such. So yeah, without uh, with uh, all that being said and spoke about colour feeding, um, obviously the quantity does matter uh, within probably 0.1 to 0.2 of a gram. Um, is you don't want to burn the birds, you don't want to leave them too short. Uh, so now we go to this one. So if you already haven't guessed, this week's eye catcher is a flighted linnet mule. Um, so I chose this bird because we're on the topic of colour feeding and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show the bird and um, show the effect colour feeding can have so uh, with that being said um, sadly the bird hasn't shown itself fantastic uh, in this video so I have added a few uh, photos uh, to have a look through so you get to a good look at the chest of the bird uh, and the face uh, so the bird did start to molt slightly before I uh, put it on colour feed again but it should come out nicely um, hopefully towards the end of the molt and we will see a real deep red across the face, um, down the flanks and on the chest. So from the eye catcher of this week, being the linnet mule, uh, we also have a special mention. Uh, so that goes to Mark Slowey. Uh, Mark Slowey is quite well known um, in the British bird hobby for his many hybrids, in particular the crossbill bullfinches. Um, however, this year he has achieved uh, a, another world first, I believe, for himself, uh, which is a Siskin cross two barred crossbill. Um, so I believe he's only bred one this year, uh, which is the world first. Um, which is which is great really, it's been a good year for Siskin Cox, uh, obviously from the uh, Siskin Cross Bullfinch we saw several uh, episodes ago, uh, to now a Siskin Cross Two Barred Crossbill. Um, so it looks like a yellow cock bird, uh, and we only have the one photo of it I'm afraid, um, but hopefully we'll get a bit more from Mark. Uh, so yeah, there you are, so that is this week's Special mention uh, to Mark Slowey for his Siskin Cross Two Bar Crossbill, uh, and also it does look like a cockbird, which is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, you get most out of it being a cockbird uh, with the, the better colour, really. So now it's time to wrap up uh, this episode. Um, if you haven't already noticed, we have uh, the lights in here now. Um, 
So these are just some LED strip lights from eBay. Um, I put them on the other day. I think they're all right. They're definitely making the place brighter, uh, which is great for the birds. And obviously the idea is that I'll mimic uh, natural daylight with these just to enhance it. We do have a lot of natural daylight coming through here, but not so much in here. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, please leave a like. Um, if you aren't already subscribed, uh, please do subscribe. I've seen that 8% of the viewers aren't subscribed. So please do subscribe to the channel. It helps massively and it's great encouragement to carry on doing all these videos um, and really opening up the bird, the bird keeping hobby uh, to a lot of more, not more people, a larger audience on YouTube. Uh, so if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. Please leave a like. Please leave any comments you have um, in the comments below, obviously, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.